are about a week and a half later, brand new Thunderbolt engine installed. So we took out the uh, 0360, I think we mentioned a couple of weeks ago on this RV6 and uh, it's a beautiful engine. Uh, it actually matches the paint job quite well. But uh, you know, new engine installation took a lot of repair of baffling. That's, uh, this is an 1800 hour aircraft. So there are a lot of things that were worn. Uh, we flushed oil cooler. We've got all new engine hoses and scat tubing firewall forward. We replaced the shear coupling on the standby alternator. If you remember, we've talked about those in past uh, uh, shows here, telling you how to do those every 500 hours. So we had it off. We just went ahead and did it here this time. And uh, of course, new oil filter and full of mineral oil. First run was yesterday after flushing the system with all the preservative oil. It started up on about the fourth blade, ran very nicely with no leak. So hopefully when the fog lifts today, we'll get a first flight out of it. Pretty cool. Hey, for those of you who may have an engine that doesn't necessarily idle properly, uh, take a look at your manifold pressure and your fuel flow. Manifold pressure on a four-cylinder engine, typically around idle, is around 10 inches of manifold pressure. On a six-cylinder engine, you'll probably see it up around 13 inches. And that's with a single point uh, manifold pressure pickup such as this, which is usually on one of the rear cylinders, goes into a, a lower port right here. So we had an engine here that wouldn't idle very well. Matter of fact, you had to have the mixture almost all the way back. And we noticed fuel flow was around 3.9 gallons an hour. Manifold pressure was up around 18. Well, that indicates an induction leak. Sure enough, we started looking around and decided we'd take a look at this fitting. So this is the manifold pressure pickup fitting. You can see whoever made this, it just, it's a horrible seal right there. So eventually it just wore and leaked. And uh, so we replaced it. All is well, nice idling, everything's where it needs to be. Here's another thing we see in a fair amount of RV10s, broken rudder stops. Right there, you can see that one's completely broken off. And we'll go around to the other side. And this one is broken and bent around. You can see this, see if I, can, I can't move it, but. Anyway, very common problem. It's a very poor design there. Those things just held in with a few rivets. You need to put a solid piece of aluminum in there. There's some aftermarket ones which work or you can just get your own. This happens from parking in the wind and without securing the rudder inside. So it just flails from side to side. And you gotta be careful when they break because they can, as you see right here, run into the elevator and put a nice little ding in your rudder. So you want to make certain you guard your elevators in the wind on the RV10s and the 14s, I believe, are the same way. So we've had a customer come to us with what they think is a sticking exhaust valve on number two cylinder indicated by high EGTs. I'm thinking it is a uh, plugged injector, but just to be sure, since Lycomings have a service bulletin with regards to sticking valves, we thought we'd check it. Exhaust springs look good. They're not broken. We use the valve wizard to take all this apart. And then what we want to do is just move this in and out. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. You can see that this is nice and free. No sticking at all in this valve. Right? This aircraft only has about 300 hours on it. So most of the time you see the sticking valves around 600 hours. So just to be sure, we know we don't have a sticking valve now. We'll see. I love it when we find a smoking gun. So remember the symptoms were high EGT, 1550 or so during climb out and cruise. Cylinder head temps looked actually not a whole lot out of line. So it, that tells me it's just running lean. And we really didn't have a valve problem. Nick had done a compression check, things looked good on it. We took out the injector on number two cylinder and you couldn't see through it when you held it up to a bright light. So that was a dead giveaway. And Nick, I don't know if you can zero in on that. Right there, right, I managed to, Put this upside down on the cloth and blow some brake clean through it and voila, there's the piece. Can you see that? Yep. Yep. So 100% certain this was the problem. Yeah. So today, just a little bit of a conversation around LifePo batteries, the lithium batteries in aircraft. I've had a lot of good experience with them over the years. I've been running one of the name brand ones for, I don't know, maybe five years now and uh, really, really excited about it. And we put a lot of them in uh, RVs as well. They just, uh, a lot of extra power out of a lithium battery. You can almost taxi on the starter. So we had the opportunity here to uh, actually take one apart 
and pulled one of the cells out and decided to maybe we ought to test it and see what happens under worst case scenario. So we removed the BMS, so now we have no protection on these cells. And what we're gonna do is do this outside. We'd recommend not doing this at home. We're gonna short these two together and actually see what happens. Okay, so here we go. It's not that warm. What's that? Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe those are safer. Well, that was a real pleasant surprise. I even feel a whole lot better that something catastrophic is not going to happen in the airplane. This thing barely got above room temperature. We didn't notice it very, being very hot at all. These shorted uh, for a very long length of time. We came back and measured it. It's down to three volts now, and that's without the BMS. So uh, I feel pretty good about this, that uh, maybe you don't have to have some uh, unnecessary worry going on with lithium battery, at least this particular brand. So for those of you who uh, just kind of keep refusing to change hoses and thinking they don't have a life expectancy to them, most hoses like these, eight years max. That includes shelf life on them. Here's a fuel pressure hose we've taken off an RV uh, uh, 10 this week. 16 years, this end of the hose, eesh, I mean it breaks. <laughs> That's how hard this hose is, okay? Please replace your hoses. So this is another friendly reminder. These air filters are not lifetime. Honest to God, I'm pushing as hard as I can and it won't bend. And it's about 66% mm, about of the normal E3450 air filter. Uh, change them out once in a while, please. At least once a year, they're only $50. And they're protecting your $50,000 engine.